let's start at the front again. <clears throat> so in the first video, I guess one of the first things I talked about, well, I don't know, I may get, I may get them in the wrong order, but let's start with this LED light. So the, oh, it almost came on. So this LED headlight is the bicycle light. Um, actually, it turned out there was a number of riders at the Cannonball with this same exact setup. This same headlight on the little front rack with a little piece of inner tube or something holding it down. Um, very common. Now, I actually only used this one time. And that was the Oklahoma day where it was the longest or the largest number of uh, miles to track in one day. And so that was actually the only day that I left before the sun came up, um, which I left, I think, at 5 o'clock and had about 30 minutes before the sun rose. Uh, the other days, even when I was waking up at 5 and leaving the hotel room, the sun was already up. So uh, was it necessary? For me, I would say the answer was no. And like I said, I turned it on that one morning, ran. It basically ran out of juice. By the time the sun came up, I ignored it for the entire rest of the trip. So I think it was like 80 bucks or $69 or something. So was it worth it? I'm going to give it a no. Not for me. Now, if there were riders, uh, plenty of riders who were leaving much earlier than me. And for them, you know, aux lights would have been more important. And for them, they probably had those hardwired in. Anyway, as an experiment, uh, i say it was kind of cool, but not worth it. Um, the Rotopax gas can, I guess we'll hit that next. So... I already, already owned this, so I didn't purchase it for the Cannonball, but um, I used it every day, and I used it, um, how would you say, uh, strategically. So <clears throat> I had on every day's route, I had a sheet uh, where I, it was basically section by section, and these were checkpoints or gas stops, or sometimes it would be a checkpoint where I had notes to myself to fill gas from either one of my either the Rotopax or one of my little uh, MSR bottles. So definitely this was critical. Uh, I did like, I do like the Rotopax how if you shove it in the uh, filler of the tank and it presses the, uh, the activator in, I guess on the spout, then it just goes and it's pretty fast. Um, now, doing it over again. I would not take the Rotopax on the front. I would not buy this front rack. I bought this front rack pretty much just for the purpose of hauling this gas can. You know, that front rack, those are cool, those are stylish, but I don't know if I'm ever gonna use it. And it was, uh, you know, a little bit expensive, and this is only one gallon. If I could do it all over again, I would not use this. I also would not use the single MSR bottle inside here. Um, but on this rack, the center rack, I think I would rather uh, just have a gas can. I would rather have the one and a half gallon or whatever it is, um, easy pour, the one from Amazon. Um, I use those for like mixing gas, for like taking gas through my trials. And um, yeah, so rather than taking this, this canister here with a little splash of gas in it, on that center rack, I would just use one of these uh, Violi straps and just have a can like this. One of these guys. And these guys are easy to fill also. It's got like a trigger to kind of quick fill. That's what I would do. And maybe, you know, consider a larger can, maybe the two gallon. But I mean, honestly, for me, it worked out. I was basically doing two bona fide gas stops a day. And I know there were some guys that had tanks plumbed in so they would drive all day with no stops, but I don't know. I felt it was good to stop every once in a while and get off the bike and stretch your legs. The windscreen worked great. Um, it's filthy. I know it looks horrible. I actually did wash this bike one time in Oklahoma, so all these bugs are like Arkansas, Georgia bugs. Um, windscreen was fine. Uh, the electronics, all good. Uh, so I did end up using, like I said, and you'll see this in my upcoming videos, I had a uh, basically odometer here, a zoom in version of my Gaia map here, and a zoom out version here. And then this one, using the quad lock, I could pull my phone off quickly, take my photos, 
um, for the check-ins, do my check-ins, and just you know anything else. Um, so yes to all of these. I could have done. I mean, if I had to, I could do away with the with the trip odometer. That was actually just kind of a necessity. I mean, not a necessity. Kind of just a um, luxury, really, because it just kept kept my brain going. You know, when I'm going all day, 400 miles, 380 miles. If you break it up into 20 and 30 and 40 mile sections, it you know makes it easier to bite bite off. Um, so that just kept me on point with that. But there were many days where I'd forget to even use it sometimes. So not critical. Um, also, I guess if I had to, I could just use one map and zoom in and out. But I really did like having a dedicated uh, view, zoom in and zoom out. Tire pressure monitor. So this is the psychic tire pressure monitor. Um, OK. I'll keep it real brief. Uh, do I need it? No. Um, was it nice to have? I think so. Was it kind of a pain sometimes? Yes. And the reason is, is because um, the very first day I arrived, it, the alarm went off and it, it told me I was losing tire pressure in, in both tires, first one, then the other. And um, that was due to the valve stems, the rubber valve stems failing that the little heavy caps were on. Uh, Psychic recommends that you have to use metal valve stems. I tried to use the rubber caps that were already on my wheels and they failed. So anyway, that was a pain. I ended up actually changing the valve stems the day before, or the two days on the Friday before the start. Um, that was a whole pain. Um, so I got all that done and then I had the measurements. I did use them a lot going through the deserts uh, on the way to Lake Havasu City where it was like 104 degrees. And the temps were soaring. It was like awful. And um, I don't know. I kept my eye on it. I didn't have any problems. But overall, I'm not really sure if I need that or not. I'm going to give that a meh, solid meh. Um, OK, back in the, uh, the tools here. So I had this waterproof bag here. And in this dry bag was my um, tire inflator, the uh, portable air compressor that plugs into this SAE port. And I did use it a couple of times. Um, and excellent, needed it. The SAE port worked great. That's a Optimate setup, goes right to the battery, it's got a fuse. Um, but the other thing that was in here was my, um, like a battery bank that's used to, to jumpstart a car or something. So, so there's my air compressor. Um, you've probably seen it in some of the other videos or whatever, but anyway, this thing worked great. Um, this thing I didn't use and probably, you know, had no reason to actually carry it. In fact, I've never used this. One time I tried to jumpstart my wife's car with it and that was, yeah, it's got a dead battery. Now. Anyway, so I don't know. This is a, I'm going to give this a no and I'm going to give this a yes. Okay, I guess next up is the hydration system. So you can see maybe down in here, I have this Camelback bag or it's, uh, I don't know, can't remember what the brand is. So this was the Osprey 1.5 liter water bag I had down in that, down in there. And then I, you may remember it was mounted up here and it was retractable and all that good stuff. It was good for the first few days. Definitely used it through the hotter Western states and through Oklahoma where I could basically duck my head down behind the windscreen here, pull the hose up into my helmet and drink on the fly. Um, but after a while, it started getting funky smelling and funky tasting and I quit using it <clears throat> and ended up dumping it out and then just putting a Gatorade bottle down here and using this little backpack as a little storage sack, which is great. So honestly, if I were to do it again, I think I would dump this idea and just have some kind of bottle holder down here. I really like this backpack. You may remember I had a GoPro arm mounted here that I was going to use for a 360 camera, which I ended up not even taking on the trip. And also I was going to use it for like a selfie mode, which I used, I think, one time. Um, thing is, in the, the shooting video during this whole Cannonball week, uh, it quickly became a second thought. I mean, I was focused on, actually, I was focused on trying to be competitive. So shooting video and trying to think of compelling things to say into the helmet cam and all of that, that went out the window. 
Um, that's going to make it a little bit challenging and interesting for me to try to edit these video clips, but we'll see what comes out. Um, so yeah, as far as shooting video, unless you're just taking your time and you're a lot better at it than I am, I would say forget all that stuff. Um, and also, I saw a number of people with helmet cams and chin, chin mounts. I'm interested to see what everybody's going to do. I know GoPram's going to have a video series and Quasi Motard is going to have one. Um, but there's a lot of people out there that I saw with, with shooting stuff and I hope they actually end up putting stuff up. I would like to see it. Um, back on, last little thing on electronics, this USB port, the dual USB port, worked perfectly. And I did carry, in this pouch here, I carried a uh, backup auxiliary USB charger that goes into the SAE and I never used it, thank goodness, because the main one worked great. Uh, and then I, and, and this ended up just being the land of forgotten toys here, the little basically uh, RAM mount stuff and extra cables and that kind of stuff. Again, I took too much. Um, I ended up actually shipping some things home midway through the trip in Oklahoma. I went to the post office and mailed a box of stuff home. Mostly it was like extra clothes. I ended up packing way too much clothes. Like, like I, I, I think I wanted to take six pairs of socks, which is too much, but I ended up packing them twice. So I had 12 pairs of socks. So I shipped the, you know, half that home and some dirty clothes and some GoPro stuff that I, I wasn't using. Um, so I've already taken my rain gear out because I used it, but everything else in here, um, uh, I would say it was cool. Uh, the second windscreen for the, the, or sun, the second visor for the helmet, I don't know if I needed that. I should have just started with one or the other. I took the clear and the mirrored and ended up switching to the mirrored after a couple days. Didn't need to take both. Um, first aid kit I never used, but absolutely necessary. Um, bungee net I never used, but probably not a bad idea to have. I did top off my oil. I didn't do an oil change. I just, I just topped it off. Checked it twice, topped it up. Um, tools were good. The only thing I don't have that I'm gonna add is I don't have the particular tools that you use to hold um, to do a belt change. I mean, I figured I could get by with just using screwdrivers or Allen wrenches or something. Um, I never, like I said, never did the oil change. So I have an oil filter ready to use for whenever that happens. I didn't change a belt, I got that, that's gonna go on. We didn't have any rain, so I didn't have to use my rain booties. Here they are. It's got my waterproof rain booties, never worn. But yeah, um, I don't think I'd change anything in here, other than like I said, the belt, the belt's uh, stability tools. And yeah, that's about it. My rear GV case, so it had too much stuff. Like I said, I had too many clothes. Um, I also, I took two laptops. I took a personal laptop and a work laptop. I was using the personal laptop for archiving daily footage. Yeah, I guess I needed at least one of those. Um, I should have left the work laptop at home because once this thing started, work was, I wasn't even thinking about work, I'm sorry. I do also have uh, another way to archive footage to a SSD hard drive that I think I'm going to test out and probably take on my next adventure as to not have to take a laptop. But in general, I really did like having the hard case. I was able to snap it off and take it into the hotel room each night. Um, you can see it moving around. That's because the rack, uh, I had it zip tied down with a couple of like big zip ties to keep it from folding up and those broke. So it's currently being held with little violi straps. Yeah, I would say yes to the top box, but pack lighter. Uh, and then that, I guess that leaves this aux can of fuel, which I don't think I needed. I mean, that, that amount of fuel barely made a dent. And every time I put it in, it was like, I put it in and either I didn't need to, or I was going to run out of gas anyway. The one time it was helpful is I loaned Cheryl, uh, one of the experienced, um, cannonballers, some gas. I, she was on the side of the road, broken down and I stopped and gave her a bottle. That's it. Only other thing I would say is, uh, you'll see in the videos, but this is not my exhaust i had to get a replacement exhaust mid midway through the trip um the mid pipe section of mine 
rusted loose and fell off. And then for a whole day, I sounded like a freight truck. It was awful. Um, so anyway, I made a deal. First, I made a deal to buy this used Melosi pot pipe, which got delivered to me from uh, Vespa of Marietta. They delivered to me in Rome, Georgia. But meanwhile, the guy I borrowed this pipe from a guy who had a bro bro busted up engine in his GTS, and I ended up just making him an offer just to keep it so I didn't have to deal with taking it back off. So I now have two exhausts. I don't know why, I don't know what I'll do. Maybe I'll try that Melosi out and see if it gives me a little extra pep. Um, I don't think I ever went in the glove box or anything at all, other than to pull the, what do you call it, the me mechanical cruise control out, which I hated. It didn't really hold it wide open. It would hold, it, I would set it and it would slack off. It, it just, I didn't like it. It was uncomfortable. I ended up ditching it and just holding with my hand, which got to be pretty painful after a few days, but um, what is pain if not uh, part of the cannonball? Ended up finishing with the same front I started on, but I ended up changing rear in, mm, I think New Mexico, yes, Los Alamos, New Mexico. I changed rear and then that rear made it to the end, but it's about cached. So I'm probably gonna put the other rear back on to get me through, you know, whatever, winter. And then when I refurbish this for spring next year, um, new set of tires, new belt, new set of tires, oil change, all of that. Um, I did have that one spill in the sand pit. Um, this bike had already been dropped in, on this side, so there's really nothing noticeable that, there. But I'm gonna have to do some kind of paint work to uh, cover up these scratches and also underneath here I don't know if you can see in the bottom scratch up there and this is all out of shape and I don't know if I'm going to try to bend that back but anyway all in all I'll say um, my main advice would be keep it light keep your pack minimal keep it light if you don't really need it don't take it you know, every day we were going through a town with a Walgreens and a CVS and a Walmart, pretty much. You know, keep it simple. There were some guys I saw riding. Now, maybe they had support trucks, you know, gear on support trucks or whatever. But I saw guys w riding with nothing but a spare gas can in the uh, well, in the, in the center well, and a backpack. That's about all. Um, I guess the last question would be, would I do it again? Yes, I'm already planning for 2025. Uh, I've heard rumors of what the route may be. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm still thinking whether or not I'm gonna campaign the same GTS um, or maybe switch to a Honda ADV 160. They're in a more competitive class, I'll just put it that way. Um, GTS rips, it's awesome. I could, I mean, I already have it, so I could run it again. And also I've kind of already trashed it. So maybe that's reason enough to consider the GTS again for the next cannonball. Take it easy, guys.